Hello. As you come in, go ahead and share this video. Like it, follow, comment, let me know where you are watching from. All right, today I'm going to be praying concerning revival, and I'm going to uh, talk about revival. That's what the Holy Spirit began to um, share with me when I began to ask him what did he want to share on this live today. So, Father, we bless you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. It is for your mercy. We are not consumed. Great is your faithfulness to us. We honor you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us, speaking through us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your grace, your empowerment, your love. We thank you, Holy Spirit. It is not by strength. It is not by our power, but it is by the Holy Spirit that anything is done or accomplished for God. And we cooperate fully with you in Jesus' name. So welcome to Wow en Route to Wow en Route Empowerment. My name is Sherry Downs. I am a coach, an author, a speaker, a um, content creator. We thank God for his mercy and his grace that allows us to do what we do. You can find all of my resources on www.touchdownsenterprise.com. I also have an upcoming conference, April 28th through the 29th, called WOW, Women of Weight. You're welcome to meet us in Deerfield. We're going to have a powerful time in the Lord with speakers that are um, set to pour out from God's Spirit all the things that the Holy Spirit will begin to give them and impart to them for that weekend that your souls may be refreshed and revived by God's spirit. So as I begin to sit with the Lord, I begin to hear um, um, revival. So I want to pray for revival. And then I'm going to um, actually... Sorry, I just got a notification on my phone. Um, I'm going to actually give you just some things that the Holy Spirit began to share with me as I begin to meditate before him this morning. As you come in, go ahead and share the video. Invite somebody on. Tag your friends. Share it to your networks. All right, Father, we bless you. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. It is for your mercies that we are not consumed. Great is your faithfulness. Father, I pray for those that will watch this live and those that will watch the replay. I pray, Father, for your grace, your empowerment to ignite them again, to bring them into the place of flourishing and prospering. We pray, Father, for your empowerment and your grace upon those that would hear this message, upon those that would yield to what you have placed on the inside of me. We pray, Father, that those that hear this message, God, that you will begin to bring revival to their homes. You will begin to bring revival to their lives. We pray, Father, for the grace of God 
and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, that it will begin to rest upon their home, rest upon their finances, rest upon those things that you have called them to. We pray, Father, for your grace and your mercy upon their marriages, their finances, that you will begin to awaken them to greater spiritual truths of the kingdom in Jesus' name. So I want to read Psalms 85 verse 6 through 8. Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Verse 7. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto people, unto his people, and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. So the word revive just begin to be in my spirit this morning. And as we are um, a body of Christ, there are many people that are looking for revival, crying out for revival, petitioning God for revival, not even on a global scale, but just revival, even in their homes, revival, um, means to revive. It's simply put to, it means to make something operative or valid again. It signifies that someone or something was once in operation. To revive is to restore to life or consciousness, to improve conditions or the position of, regain life, consciousness, or strength. Revive is to restore interest in or popularity of, to give new strength or energy to. So what we are seeing in the world, just because just from the last 10 to five years of what the world has experienced, what the world has went through. I'm not even talking about on a personal level. Let's talk about on a global level, the pandemic. We've experienced plagues, sickness, disease, pestilence, um, cancer, um, so many school shootings. I know in the United States, we've experienced that. We've experienced so much warfare and we've experienced just the rise of oppressive leadership. We've experienced so many things on a global scale that it seems as if the body of Christ along with the world is, has experienced some sort of oppression, has experienced some sort of lack. So in context, we have to understand and we have to recognize the need for a revival. In Psalms 86, those that were crying out begin to say, wilt thou not revive us again? So they were petitioning God for a revival. They have been petitioning God for a substantial um, transition from the current state that they have found themselves in. And if a revival is needed to bring something back to consciousness, to improve a condition, to uh, signify life and operation and restoration, it means that something was either dead, lifeless, unconscious, lacking in strength, needing restoration and needing operation again. So revival happens when something comes back to its original intention or its original mode of operation. So the writer began to declare a need for revival. We know in the earth what we are experiencing, the, the, the evil that is advancing, the body of Christ, the world at large, the world is in need of an awakening and the body is in need of a revival. You, when you're in the body of Christ, what you may lack is revival. In the world, the world experiencing experiences an awakening out of slumber, out of spiritual apathy, out of spiritual blindness and darkness. So what God is doing with the uh, evil that has been perpetrated in the earth. The other day, I ran across a video of a father literally 
killing uh, um, their two born, two year, two years old daughter, a two year, his two year old daughter on a FaceTime call with the mother, all because she moved on and she didn't want to date him anymore. And she began to date somebody else. And this father picks this child up from daycare and takes her to his home and literally calls the mom and FaceTimes her and kills this two-year-old on FaceTime. The world is in, in, in need of an awakening out of its evil state. And the body of Christ is in need of, of a revival, reviving us back to vitality, reviving us back to a place of spiritual um strength where we can war for the world, where we can be the example that the world looks to, that we can hold the power that God has delegated to the church. So the world, the body of Christ is in need of a revival. In the context of the kingdom and spiritual life, revival is definitely needed. We need um, to find ourselves in the position, in the condition that is favorable to the to the world and that is favorable to the body of Christ. But revival happens when there is a need and acknowledgement that something is off, something is wrong. We have to come to an awareness that we need revival. We have to come to an awareness that we're in lack. We have to come to an awareness that we're not in a favorable condition. We have to come into an awareness that we're not living in a life of strength. We're not experiencing the glory of the Lord. We're not experiencing the flourishing of God. We're not experiencing a strength in our ministry. Our homes are being ravaged. Our children are falling away. We have to come to an acknowledgement that God, something is wrong. Something is off. Wherever you're barren, that area of your life needs revival. Wherever you lack, that area of your life needs revival or an awakening. Where there's stagnation, that area needs a revival. So we have to take inventory of our lives to see what is dead around me. What is not feeding me? What is not sharpening me? These areas of our lives have to experience the revival of God. And in order for revival to happen, we have to get hungry for it. And what makes us get hungry for revival? When we're tired of the condition that we're living in, when we're tired of not seeing results, when we're tired of the enemy oppressing us, when we're tired of living without kingdom results, when we read the word of God and we're not experiencing the life that God intended for us to experience, when we're experiencing spiritual attack and the enemy is stealing from us, he's robbing us of the joy of our salvation. That's when we have to recognize that a revival is needed. I need a revival in my marriage. I need a revival in my ministry. I need a revival in my church. I need a revival in my home, in my parenting. My children need revival. So revival is needed. Revival is uh, warranted because people acknowledge it, because people don't live in a place of ignorance, because people are honest with themselves and they are honest with God. People are tired of not getting results. Think about it. When people revolt, when people start a revolution, it is because they are longing for something different. They are longing for change. We understand that revolution is igniting change, but revival is bringing back to a vitality, bringing back to a state or a position that is favorable. And God is wanting and is looking for hearts that will position themselves, that will acknowledge, hey, something is off in my home. Something is off in my church. We're not experiencing healing. We're not experiencing deliverance. And a people that will petition themselves, just like Psalms 86, 
Will thou not revive us again? Lord, where is your hand? Where is your hand of revival? We understand what the power of God can do. Will you not bring revival to my home? Will you not bring revival to my finances? They begin to question God as to why his power wasn't working, why his power wasn't alive, why his the word of God wasn't moving quick and powerfully through their lives, why they didn't see what they saw in scripture. So they begin to cry out. It's time for mothers to begin to cry out. It's time for pastors to begin to cry out. It's time for uh, teachers to begin to cry out for revival in the classrooms so that that child that wants to walk inside that room and shoot up the classroom drops that gun, turns his, that mind is changed and the enemy can no longer oppress that mind to do harm and damage. It's time for revival in every sphere of influence, but somebody's got to cry out for it. Somebody's got to acknowledge that it's needed. Somebody has to petition themselves before God to cry out for revival. So we got to acknowledge that we need it. We have to take inventory. Type in the comments, take inventory. Take inventory. Take inventory of your spiritual journey. Take inventory of where your children are versus where God told you that they would be or where the word of God says that they should be. Take inventory of your life. Begin to be honest with yourself. Begin to be honest with your congregation saying, hey, this thing is, is not working. This thing is not happening like God said it will. We're not seeing miracles. We're not seeing people lifted up out of poverty. We're not seeing marriages whole. We're not seeing the kingdom results. So we have to take inventory as to where our condition is individually and as a body. So the prerequisite so we have to have a need for revival. People have to cry out for it. And then there's a prerequisite before it comes. The prerequisite to revival is repentance. Acts 3 and 19 says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So when we are seeking revival, Revival it, it is uh, times of refreshing, times that we are back to our valid state, a vitality in a favorable condition or position, not only naturally, but spiritually as well. Inwardly, we have refreshing. Inwardly, we experience love. Inwardly, we experience joy. And we also experience that in areas of our lives as revival begins to hit our homes. So we can experience revival individually and we can experience revival on a global scale. So the place of revival is the heart of of man. God will begin to come and change the dynamics and the culture of men's hearts when revival hits. When revival hits, it's a prerequisite of repentance, of turning away, of higher thinking, of coming up to a higher place, a higher realm of thinking, changing the way we think about God, changing the way we think about the body of Christ, changing the way we think about our finances, changing the way we think about our marriage, changing the way we think about God. So the prerequisite, when I acknowledge that revival needs to take place, when I take inventory, I have to go to God and repent, come up higher, take a different position, change the way you think, get on, get new thinking patterns. I begin to eat new knowledge. I begin to receive revelation. I begin to receive greater insight. I begin to see that I have been in a place of bondage and how to get free. I begin to see new patterns. I begin to take on new behaviors. I begin to bring my thinking up higher so my actions will follow so that I don't find myself in that same state of deadness. So I won't find myself in that same place of lack. Revive 
revival has to come. In this hour, the Lord is raising up men and women that will be the voice of revival, that will carry revival, that will carry new revelation, that will carry new insight, that will carry greater understanding to bring the body of Christ into a higher understanding, a higher place of revelation of who he is and what the kingdom of God entails. He is bringing the body of Christ back to himself, back to Jesus Christ in the posture of repentance. So when I acknowledge, when I take inventory and I acknowledge something's off, something is wrong, something's not working. I'm not experiencing what the Bible says I should experience. I'm not experiencing what the pastor says I should experience. So I've got to take inventory and I have to go to God and repent. Repentance is just not being sorry, but repentance is saying, God, I'm sorry. I must not be thinking um, this thing through properly. I don't have the right pattern of thought. I don't have the right strategy. So father, I repent of dead thinking. I repent of wrong actions. I repent of dead religion. And Lord, I want you to bring my thoughts and my behaviors to a higher place of being, to a higher realm of understanding, to a place and posture where I can change the way I act. So it's not just saying sorry. It's just not receiving new thoughts and new ideas and new downloads, but you begin to work it. You begin to put these things in action and you begin to see these things bear fruit. So revival is just not a place of repentance. When the heart changes, you don't go back to that same place. When revival hits your home, it should be lasting. You should ascend to a higher realm. When the when revival hits humanity, people should not be the same. People should have an encounter and an experience with God. We have to understand revival is just not emotionalizing people. Come on. And causing people to shout and run all over the church and, and, and do bodily exercise. No, revival is an upgrade in your heart. Revival is new understanding, new revelation. I begin to see how I got in the state that I was in. And then my actions start to follow. Because one of the things that God showed me, it's hard to rejoice in the Lord when chains are on you. It's hard to do ministry when money is funny. It's hard to do things for the kingdom of God when you're uh, uh, tilling the ground and the ground is not yielding. The, the, the ground is a toil for the ground to yield fruit unto you, for the ground to produce. So when we are sowing into the kingdom, when we are sowing finances, when we are sowing those things, we got to begin to take inventory. Okay, I'm sowing finances, but is my heart posture right? Did God tell me to do that? Or am I sowing because I think my money is going to work for me? I think the kingdom of God is um, a, 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 a savings account or a bank account. Or am I sowing out of leadership of the Holy Spirit? So when revival is an awakening, it begins to quicken us. Revival is a visitation of God towards his people. When we have revival, we experience a visitation of God. God comes to your doorstep. God comes to your home. God comes to your marriage. God comes to your finances. It's not just something that we experience and nothing happens as a result. It's just not bodily exercise. It's just not an experience. But the revival that God causes to happen, it quickens us. It touches our hearts on a deeper level. And we experience the grace of God to change positions. We experience the grace of God in extraordinary ways. It begins to bring our whole being to a higher place, to a higher realm, to greater understanding, walking in greater authority, greater obedience. We start to experience the refreshing of God. We start to experience the presence of God. We start to experiencing realms of God's glory. We start to experience backsliding 
daggers come home. We start to experience reconciliation in our marriages, reconciliation in our friendships. We start to experience the community that we are in turning to God. We start to experience our loved ones returning unto God, seeing the hand of God, restoring people back to God. In a vital spiritual life, we witness the work of God through prayer and intercession. When revival hits our lives, the spiritual decline diminishes and you begin to see a spiritual upheaval. You begin to experience a spiritual wind, should I say? I'll use that word. You'll begin to experience a spiritual wind where things start to turn around, where things start to shift, where your bank account starts to flourish, where your businesses start to turn around and products are being sold, where things that you put your hands to before, which were not yielding the uh, uh, fruit that you thought they should, they start yielding fruit. You'll start seeing evangelism on the rise. You'll start seeing people running to the church saying, what must I do to be saved? So as it is, the state that the world has been in, the crises that's been happening, people dying left and right of sickness and disease. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten on social media or Facebook and I'm seeing somebody that that's dead, somebody that just dropped dead, somebody that uh, died in their sleep, somebody that uh, was taken out by cancer. When, when we start to position ourselves for revival, when we acknowledge that people should not be dying and the answer is found in God, we will begin to position ourselves in a posture of repentance to see revival happen in our very homes, in our very churches. And then we'll start to see the revival happen on a global scale. Why? Because men start getting hungry for the more of God. They start getting hungry to see God's work. They start getting hungry for the more of what, for more than what they've been experiencing. Dead religion no longer satisfies. They want to experience God because revival entails a God experience. Type in the comments, I need to encounter God. What revival does, it raises the esteem of Jesus. Satan's kingdom suffers because genuine repentance happens. Now, if we're creating movements and if we're having all of these conferences, if we're having these things, we ought to see real genuine repentance coming to the house of God. We ought to see people laying down weaponry. We ought to see people and leaders coming together for the greater good. We ought to see God taking the body of Christ into the next place of power and dominion. We should see men and women having greater responses to the scriptures. We should see men and women aligning themselves with clear spiritual truths and not error. We should see sons and daughters returning, prodigals coming home. We should see the opposition against God's church defeated. We should see the body of Christ come together in greater unity. When true revival hits, we'll start to see miracles, signs, and wonders, and we'll see a sense of purity in the teachings, a purity in the movements, a purity of, of, of delivering what we carry as a fivefold gift to the body of Christ. We won't hold ransom the things of God and the giftings and the graces that God has imparted into us. The world needs revival. Families need revival. Finances need revival. Churches need revival. And the world needs an awakening. I pray that everything that God has ordained for your life, I pray that the ministry that you have, I pray that your families, your marriages, your businesses, your ministries, your churches will begin to be on fire for God, that there will be a hunger created in the hearts of the people, that there will be an acknowledgement and a need and an inventory that revival needs to happen, that revival has to take place. 
for us to see God, for us to encounter God, for hearts to yield fully to God. I pray that you begin to be set on fire to serve God in a greater dimension, in a greater place of surrender, in a greater place of unity, in a greater place of spiritual uh, 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 awakening, that you will begin to draw closer to God as he draws closer to you. I pray that this in inspired you. I pray that it ignited, ignited you. I pray that you will begin to serve God in the beauty of holiness, to encounter God in a greater dimension. I want to invite you to Deerfield, Illinois, April 28th through the 29th for Women of Weight Conference. I pray that you are able to meet us there and I pray that Holy Spirit will begin to empower you to get in the place of God's presence, to get into uh, environments where, where God is speaking, environments where God is moving. I pray that even in your church, that you begin to see the miracles of God. You begin to see signs and wonders. You begin to see lives transform and deliver from the preaching of the word. Thank you for listening. I love you guys. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you are inspired and I pray that you prosper in everything that God has ordained for you. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.